Hey, it's been a while. You want to go do a shop tour? Let's do it. Oh, look, a cat. It's a beautiful day and I feel like goofing off, so why don't we do a shop tour? Uh, this is not the first one I've done. You can go back and see the old ones, but I'm like a creature of change. I'm always changing the way I do things. I've been in the shop for almost four years now, and so a lot has changed and evolved. My workflow has changed. My tool collection has changed. And I'm always adapting and trying to reinvent how I do things. So for those of you that get into that sort of thing, I'll show you the latest incarnation of how my shop is set up and explain to you why I have things the way they are. Maybe it'll help you while you're setting up your shop and changing it. Probably be doing that again tomorrow. All right, let's check it out. This is bay one. Now I'm really lucky I have a lot of space here. Uh, there's some downsides to it, but the upside is, is I have a lot of space here. So as an upcycler and a reclaimer, I'm able to grab stuff and hang on to it and hoard it when the need arises, I can just pull it out of storage. So the theory has always been, and I'm finally getting closer to that, as you'll see through this, this tour, is I have three bays. Bay one is where the raw product comes in, gets stored, broken down, sorted, classified, processed. Uh, this is like the big mess. This is where I try to bang out the nails. Uh, I've got some of the, the messier machines in here. This is like my box store. Um, so when I'm on a project, I come in here to grab the material I need, break it down, and then bring it into my main shop bay, bay two, where it then gets processed and turned into something. And Vance keeps his toolbox and his workbench over on this side of the shop and we just take it out into my side of the shop when he's here working. This is always the bay that's like the worst mess. Uh, so let's get out of here. This is the second bay, it's my main shop, and we're gonna spend a lot more time in here in a minute, but right now the CNC machine's running. I've got robots doing my work, my minions. So uh, we're gonna go right over to the third bay and then come back here. This is the third bay. It has been the embarrassment bay, and I finally have started to clean it up and fulfill my dream of world domination. <laughs> so that's what prompted me to sort of do this tour. But this is my new paint spray area. Now this is still a work in progress, but this has been my dream, because we all know it's like you get to that point in the day where you're putting the finish on, and now you can't work anymore. You know, there's, there's sawdust in the air, it's gonna ruin your finish. So I've wanted a dedicated spot to do finishes. I finally cleaned this bay out. I just built these really, really shoddy walls. I just threw them up with some, some OSB and like, there's like two, two by fours to each wall. But it's just a two boxy area and brighten it up. I'm still working on lighting. Uh, I have a buddy that does work at a local light company. I'm hoping we can do something. Uh, I want to get some LEDs maybe along this wall and in the ceiling. I've got ventilation by just simply putting fans in the window. I can open this door up as well. Uh, so it's a pretty decent space to spray. I have my air compressor on the other side of that wall and the line run up here so I can spray finishes on. So now when I'm putting finish on, I can come in here, I can do it, I can go back to work creating sawdust on the other side of this wall, which is a little bit better sealed up to keep the sawdust out. Super exciting, I'm very excited. And I've already seen an increase in my production and my workflow from having this space here. Uh, I'm not sure what's gonna happen in the winter. I don't know if I'll be able to keep it warm enough in here because I don't have any heat. I do have some space heaters, we'll see, so I might not be able to reap the full benefit of it year-round, but I'm going to sure as heck take advantage of it while I can. Behind this wall is just some dark storage, <laughs> and um, yeah, I'm still moving in, still setting it up. I haven't had any kind of a space like this long enough to know how to set it up properly, so that'll evolve and change. Let's go see if the robots are done and we'll uh, tour the main shop. I'll start in the robotics corner over here because it's probably one of the newest and biggest changes to the way that I work. I've been messing around with CNC's for almost a year now. I wasn't super excited about learning it because I didn't want to do all the work to learn it, but man, I am so glad I did. And it reminds me of when I was a young musician in like the 90s and a lot of computer-based music started to hit the market. And I would worked my butt off learning to play the guitar and I had this attitude of like, well, they're not really playing instruments, they're using computers. And then I got some computer software that made music and I tried to learn it. And I realized that it was a whole different skill set that I didn't have. And these guys put just as much time into the, the you know, workout learning how to do that kind of music as I did learning how to play the big double bass. Same thing with CNC. Anybody that says that working with CNC is like some easy cop-out way of doing making or woodworking has never used CNC. It's freaking hard to learn it all. Don't be afraid of change. Change is good. And I still plan on using my handsaw too. There's a place for both, you know? The last time I started moving furniture around in here, I... I set up the, the miter station here with these sort of risers so I can actually put 
some tools up here and use this space a little bit better. Still a work in progress. I'm trying to get some dust collection going to it. See what happens. I heat my whole shop with wood. I use all my scrap wood as well as some stuff that's falling down in my yard and around the property here. When I built this shop, I put these walls in and I insulated the main shop so I can actually get it up into the 60s and sometimes even 70s, but really 60s in here. This wall is just a bunch of junk that I've saved. I guess it's like the wall of shame slash inspiration. <laughs> so I've got all my hardware over here. This is something I just picked up from Duresta's shop, but I'm not sure if I like it. I have another idea of something I'm going to make to sort hardware better. But my, my hand tools and my hardware and some of my, my tape measures and tape and glue and all that stuff kind of just stays in this area, which is where I do the bulk of my woodworking. Here's a little tip or trick you'll see around my shop. I have more than one hammer. Why keep them all in one place? I have a hammer and a mallet right there, and I have a hammer and a mallet right here, and I have hammers and mallets over there. So when I need one, I don't have to go walking for it. Anything I have duplicates of, I spread around the shop. So I can just save myself some walking. One of the things that just continues to inspire and amaze me is the people that I meet through this work that I'm doing and how much they become a part of my life. I've noticed that just as I'm doing this tour, like everything has this sort of story to it. Like my latest acquisition here is this uh, six inch jointer, which I got from my good friend. I always talk about uh, Dave over at Elm City Vintage, check out his channel. And there's all these other things from Dave in the shop. And, and then I have my, my table saw here. I gave away my old table saw because Mr. Duresta gave me his old table saw when he got a new one. And uh, you know, there's just this like this flow of, of uh, materials and ideas and tools and inspiration that comes around between us. And it really, it's really special. This is the main like kind of, you know, where the wood comes in to, to this side of the shop. The table saw is set right up by the garage door so the four by eight sheets can come right off the truck and right across the table saw. I don't have a dedicated out you know, uh, outfeed table. It's just my main workbench. I built it sort of around this S shape. Um, the joints are here now by the door, which is like, I'm super excited to have. Uh, yeah, pretty classic kind of wood shop setup. These are some changes over here. This is sort of a continuation of my woodworking stuff. I have this spindle sander I just recently bought for an upcoming job. I got my router over here. All my routers are in this drawer, so all my routing stuff's together. And then again to the saws, like the scroll saw and the band saw. I don't have dust collection on this side of the shop yet. That's something I've been slowly working on, is trying to beef up my dust collection and spend less time sweeping. Getting there. Now we're starting to head into the metalworking section. Really, I should swap places between this drill press and this wood lathe. So the wood lathe is over there because this is sort of multifunctioning for wood and metal. Uh, but it's heavy as heck. <laughs> I don't feel like moving it, so it just stayed there when I move stuff around. Now you'll notice I have two drill presses. This was my grandfather's, uh, and then I managed to get this one a few years ago, which is a better drill press, uh, the heavier duty, bigger. But I really like having my grandfather's drill press set up in the shop, and I love having my son use it, so I keep it there even though it takes up some valuable space. I just have this little MIG welder. It's uh, plugged right into a normal outlet. I have some gas on it. Here's a little pro tip. I keep my auto darkening helmet right here. And I keep it underneath this dark shirt. One is to keep the dust out of the machine and the other one is to keep the light off the auto darkening helmet because I have this theory that every time I'm using my angle grinder right there that the sparks are going to cause that thing to go dark and it's going to wear the battery down. I made this table out of some scrap steel. Um, Works pretty good. I would like to clean that up and get some better storage, but it's working for now. When I got Mr. Dress's old table saw, I had to run a 220 line to power, and I didn't have one in here. Uh, so that got ran over here next to the saw, which means I can now also use my plasma cutter with 220. I keep it under here. I should probably put something over it to keep the dust out of it, because it is pretty close to the table saw. But the table saw is the one part of the shop I actually have some dust collection working fairly well on right now. Speaking of dust collection, the dust collector is on the other side of this wall. I have one of those like Christmas light things. And then you can carry it around with you by just clipping it on your belt. Turn the dust collection off and on wherever you go. This is like the mini machine shop with that old drill press. I have a variable speed grinder here 
a uh, nice vise, and then I have this old metal lathe that I never really get to use. I'm hoping to learn how to use it better. I bought it because I loved it, and I, it's just it's really none of this stuff gets used too often. It just takes up a lot of space in my shop, but I hope to continue to expand and grow with my abilities. And uh, this corner is one of those places I plan on doing that. Another thing that's new to this shop are doors. I never had doors separating these bays. I always just had a shop blankets hanging down in the winter to keep the heat in. And then in the summer I would put up pieces of clear plastic just to keep the, the dust from going about. I always liked having blankets there because then I could just walk through them without having to worry about opening and closing doors. When I made that a spray area, I decided to put a solid door in because obviously I wanted to keep the dust out better. And um, now I kind of like it. The blankets are starting to get to be a pain in the neck. But that should just kind of help keep things cleaner and neater looking in here too. As I've pointed out many times before, my shop is all, not all, but primarily made of reclaimed and upcycled materials. These are just all various kitchen cabinets and whatnot. Vance has painted some of them that I've collected for free. Um, most of them, a couple of them I paid a few bucks for at antique stores. And this was an old hutch that I actually cut in half. I used to have it up full uh, so I could fit it under this bench and store stuff. I have a lot of guitar parts in here. I just recently collected a bunch from my friend Dylan. Thanks Dylan and his mom. I'm sort of gearing up to do some more guitar builds. I'm put all my guitar hardware right in here. And then I have some miscellaneous stuff in these drawers like my Dremel tools and I barely even scratched the surface with what I can do with the space under my bench. I have a line coming from the air compressor. Right now it's just sitting here on the floor, but I'm going to put a hook in there or something for it. So now I have compressed air on both sides of the wall. Super easy to access. I've never understood the fascination people have with making fancy storage racks for clamps. They don't require a lot. So that's where I keep my big clamps. Over my recycling section, which has multiple bins. This is the fanciest clamp rack I've ever made. I just cut some slots into this piece of scrap wood. I put these little things on here to aid the, keep the clamps from sort of shimmying out and falling down on me because sometimes when I'm in a hurry, I'll pull them quickly and wiggle some loose by accident. And that's about it. I put a pipe up here to hang all these clamps on. I got another pipe here to hang these clamps on. And the rest of my clamps, I just clamp. Just clamp them into the ceiling. Shop projects are a lot of fun, but I don't see the need to spend a lot of time making clamp storage. And I work in here alone, so just about everything is on wheels so I can easily move it. And I also, since I'm kind of tall, I like having the wheels because they add a couple extra inches to the height of the stands. This table here is also on wheels. That's a really large object. It also gives me the opportunity to sweep, as you can see, which needs to be done. Maybe I will right now. But the other benefit of having this table pull out is that if I'm cutting sheet goods, I can drop the sheet goods down right here, run the skill saw along, and I don't have to worry about it teetering and falling and stuff. This is my shop trick. Sometimes I come out here and I ride around in circles when I'm trying to figure something out. I just need to take a little break. Also, my shop has no facilities, so if I need to, you know, talk to a man about a tree, I sometimes hop on the trike and ride on down there. I'll be right back. Yeah, that's better. I have plans for this trike in the future. Hopefully you'll be seeing more of it. I also have storage up here. A lot of people wonder why I only have half a staircase here. And there's two reasons. One is laziness, and I'll show you the other one. I can load in and out right at shoulder height. I still have to bend over and pick it up when I get in there, but. So this is all pretty rough space, but I can store in it. Some junk I picked up off the side of the road, some wood, some things I made that I never sold. 
Uh, half the floor is rotten out over there, so we don't walk over there. My Patreon supporters know why I don't walk over there anymore. It's a little dangerous having this kind of space. I try to just not use it, otherwise it could get ugly. So the whole concept of the design is around flow. The material is either coming directly in off my truck, or it's coming in from that room where I store it, where it can then get processed. And send right onto the bench, where I can then work it. Glue it all up, sand it, send it on its way over into my new paint and spray booth. And it does actually work uh, when I'm organized, like if I'm making a table, for instance, something I do a lot. Uh, that's great, but I do spend a lot of time in the shop experimenting and just trying new things, which is why it's always changing and growing. And I tried to set it up to be a productive production shop, as well as a fun and creative place to experiment and try new things with room to grow. Thanks for watching. I hope you dig it. I hope you learned something. Leave some comments. Uh, you know, maybe talk about your shop. Link me to videos of your shop tours. Tell me what you think is stupid about my shop. <laughs> Tell me what you love. Um, like, share, subscribe, all that stuff. I'm um, looking forward to an exciting and fun summer here, creating and exploring and growing, and I hope you will come along with me. Be good. I'm going to go pretend to paint this now, too.